Seven. Let's give Emily a hand. Yeah. Emily, how's it going? Good. We just saw fantastic Japanese film Onababa. Kind of, we're we're gonna we're here to dissect it, to pull it apart. To we can throw any of, of the other uh, uh, scripts in for YouTube audience. This is a play analysis class, and we've got a nice tool set by now. I hope, and the tool set is basically this anthropological take where we're looking for binaries. Like I said, uh, look for the binary between love and war. We said, oh, that could be the mask in the right, movie. Yeah. That could be uh, the armor. That could be the water. It could be something. And the you, home. the home in the grass. They're protected in the grass, yet intruders come in all the time and find them. Um, and and we said something like the hole could like show up in a number of places. It's almost like they didn't quite remember where it was. The women did. Uh, two, we could take a, a class, uh, a social, political, economic study of it. Cla let's call it a classic Marxian take for those people in economic sociology study that, that all meaning arises from an implicit or explicit class struggle. It's a time right. of war. It's the samurai warfare. against the peasants. Samurai against the peasant farmers, men who subjugate the women, not so much because they're obviously they're different gender, but that's a that's a gender narrative that socioeconomics put into place. The women who start acting like men, they kill other men, stuff like that. Three, the, the obviously fun one, we could put this all on a sexual level and uh, p specifically Freudian, we could say, oh yeah, the hole in Japanese, the term is the hole, which could refer to the vagina. It could mean uh, a way of losing yourself in the time of war. Obviously, kim it wasn't kimchi, it was kichi. I want to call him kimchi. Come here. Come to my hut. Um, is hachi. Hachi. Not kimchi. Hachi. Uh, I know that. I had some on Sunday night. Um, he. It's a way of losing yourself in oblivion. It could be, we studied Eros and Thanatos, how they're kind of like polar opposites of each other. We could say that's anthropological. They're poles. And, uh, but now uh, Freud is id equals superego. Yeah, it's the id. It's, it's, the, it's a drive. They all want to drive to survive, but of course the basic of survival is reproducing the self. That's right. what we've been programmed for billions of years to do. The fourth one's a difficult concept, but a no less kind of effective tool in a time of globalism is, is we, t we have no preconceptions, no preconditions, no dogma. We just, again, it's like the first anthropological one. It comes out of structuralism. Let's look at the parts, and it's the postmodern take. Let's see how it mirrors itself in us as a work of media. So, for example, the id ego super ego of Freud translates into the imaginary, symbolic, and the real of Lucan. Right. So, imaginary is this, uh, I forget what kind. The symbolic is, is, I think, the ego... The real is the id, and the imaginary is, is the superego. Super what do you imagine the parents to do? Emily, that was a long preamble to give the, our audience an idea of what kind of tools in our toolbox are we attacking. Not only, And this is fun. You, I hope you guys 20 years from now say, oh, man, I just saw a film, and I remember my class at Stony Brook, and I want to analyze it this way. What, what, is the, what are the most, pick any tool out of the toolbox, what are the more salient examples in that movie, in that dramatic work? Onibaba, oh, I forget the director. Fantastic film from the 60s, Japan. Um, what were some of the more salient examples, critical examples, and what's your favorite tool? Um, well, I guess I really like the, the id, the ego, and super The id, the ego, super yeah. ego. It's basically two women trying to survive. Mm -hmm. An older woman and a younger woman. And she's the, ostensibly the mother-in-law of the son goes off and gets killed in a war. Yeah. So, so Hachi comes back and tells him. You always see it play out. I mean, there's the um, older lady trying to survive by keeping them separated. That's her survival tactic. Keeping, um, keeping Hachi, Hachi and, and the, I forget her name, the young, the daughter-in-law. They don't ever say it. Yeah, they say daughter-in-law or something like that. And... Then there's, um, they're trying to survive by killing off the intruders, and then... They're hidden in the grass, right. which could be, of this, this movie's a lot like Hitchcock, you know, Hitchcock yeah. is very Freudian, 
talking about psycho or Marnie or whatever, all these things relate to the levels of the psyche. If we had to say vertically, just like in psycho, the house that Norman lives in, there's a basement, which is subconscious. The first floor is this conscious life. And upstairs is this idealization. How could we, could we say that this grassland had a psychic realm, vertically or horizontally? Um, I guess so, because then there was the... <laughs> The house, which was like the ideal place or the super ego area. But one wasn't. The house of the two women, they didn't seem particularly happy together. No, but it was the house of Hachi where they were, whenever the girl went over the there. The love shack. Yeah. That was like the place where, let's play the song, by the B-52s. <laughs> That's the place Hachi, doesn't he even take over the son's house? I don't know. He goes back it's to ambiguous. his hut. It's his hut. They say his go back hut. to your hut. <laughs> go away. Go back to your hut. Um, Emily, and this is open to everyone. You guys are working hard. You're studying five, six courses. You're, in a sense, it's implicit. And they're experiencing warfare. Right. They hope for a better life. You guys, like they, and you can apply any tool you want to this statement, are told your life is on hold. Right? Mm -hmm. your, your goal will be over there. One day the the... The war will end. One day this economic depression will be over. One day you will have beauty, truth, eros, erotica, every paradise. One day you'll be a doctor and can afford a nice big car. And one That's day, the one day, one day. Version. That's the ideal version. Is can we have paradise now? Um Or should we? Is there an imperative to have it? We can if we make it. Like Hachi and the daughter in law it's all say in your mind. we can be happy. Even in this war, in this grassland, yeah. you have to, you catch the fish, I'll come back, we'll have a house together. Is she just trying to attain this state of completion? Of course. Everyone Even in is. a time of war. Everyone is. That's is why this? we go to war. It's why we, it's the drive behind everything. Uh, so going to war is actually maintaining an idea. Hopefully uh, a logical society goes to war for gain, right? They think war is business by other right. means. And I forget the who. gain is their ideal paradise. It's a power struggle and whatever. But they seem pretty pathetic fighting. They, they eventually kill Samurai. They lure Samurai into this, falling into this pit. And Emily, I want you to take um, a psychosexual analysis of the mask. What does that mean? It's um, not really, you can't say it's something really sexual, but right. it's it's this... And I like it because it's an Asian movie, Japanese movie, and there's so much in Asia about face. Face, Korean. What, what, is, what is this structure in the Confucian system about face? Keeping face, losing face. What? Saving face. Face is more valuable almost than money, right? I mean, she asks him if he's handsome. Ah, there's important point. He said, I was the most handsome man in all of Kyoto. He said, let's see this handsome face. And of course, she ultimately rips the mask off, and it's postular, and it's... She should have got the sense that the mask... The mask of this evil life sort of fused itself to this right. maybe formerly handsome face. Um, Christina, what face? What does face mean in the West? We're taking a view of this non-Western piece, and I say, look, look at face in this piece. How do we trade face in the West? Well, your face is everything. People say that, I mean, your first, um, when you first see somebody, they judge you. Like when you walk into an interview. If you're not, like, it doesn't almost have to do with just face, but, like, how your whole, like, how you look in general. If you walk in, like, you look like you just woke up and you didn't really care if you mentioned you did it, you're like, you Hey man, I'm here at the interview. You know, hire me because I'm cool. Oh, the mustard? Oh, sure, yeah. And not even that, but people also look at good look. When someone sees a good looking person, they say, like, oh, they must be better at, like, better at everything. Or you do the obverse. You say, the blonde bimbo, it's like, oh, he's a pretty boy, can't do nothing. Or, or she's a bimbo. Yes. They're airbrushed. Everything is like beautiful, and you're like, I wish I could look like that. And you go buy the makeup and you try, and you're like, okay, I look really not great. 
great right now, like not like a model. So it's all about faith. Hope in the bottle. That's what cosmetics are. Hope in the bottle. So let's continue. Idea of faith. Preserving, keeping, maintaining. Perfect laugh? Yeah. Perfect life? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect life. We assume that. Why do samurai wear masks, Sarah? Scary, scarier. What? They're protected. The guy said, I needed to protect my beautiful face. What a metrosexual samurai. Uh, it's like the knights. Same thing, like where they had the visors and everything. It's more like peacock feathers, right? To scare yeah. off the, the opposing dudes, right? Yeah. And so forth. Um, yeah. Because alliances were shifting. There were three warring kingdoms in this time. So if you're caught on the wrong yeah. side and you're like, oops, let me, and you're, you're all like unintended. Haji said that he's transformed from one side to the other. Oh, without empathy, without a face. That's what I mean. All these guys flying these <laughs> drones over the Afghanistan, Iraq are just pushing buttons as if it's a game. And there's no, like, seeing the face of the... I think sometimes it's trying to be cool. Face is cool. That's why you all you guys dream about the hot little cars, right? Cars become face. Cars are like that. You can have the, the, the ugliest person in it the BMW, and on the outside, ooh, beautiful car. But is, is there a dichotomy, Vikram, between... Is there a dichotomy in Asian thought between surface and interior? Uh, I think so. It, it kind of, like, comes to status. You know, like what, what surface does. Yeah, like what you are, what you're made of. Because in the West, we study from Plato onward, the Westerners make such a big deal about the, the latent, the manifest, the, the interior, the surface... That it's almost becomes this binary, and we can see it in the place Hamlet. It's like there's an inside rottenness to this, and outside everything's fine. There's there's an interplay between these two things. Veronica, what? Now way in on like that's the man's world. Man's world's running around with these phallic like samurai swords. The first scene where they're fighting with him, it's like the biggest sissy fight I've ever seen in water with these. These very <laughs> deadly summer swords it's practically slapping each other with them. And it's like drowning at the same time. Drowning at the same time. When they come ashore, the women drown them. And make a, make a connection between the armoring and the posturing and the peacock aspect of the men and the life of the women. Um, well, the women are actually living in this cold, dark, desolate world where they have to kill to survive. While the men are dressed in flashy armor where they just have the appearance of killing and struggling to survive almost. The women are actually living it, and the men are just appearing to live it. If the men want a meal, they'll go up and kill a peasant. But Hachi tells a story about being lost and being killed, uh, you know, the, the son actually being killed by peasants. Not by another samurai, but by peasants. Right. Veronica, what's the dichotomy between being in the grass and being just above the grass? Having a view of the world, kind of a global view of the world, over and being in it. And then the, the other vertical dichotomy, the whole <clears throat> then you can't actually do anything because you see the whole picture. You need to see the smaller picture, like the women. The grass the in front of you, the samurai coming through the grass, bring, luring the samurai to the hole to kill him. Um, that's interesting. Is this Shrajita? No. Shrajana. Is this a movie of script about the fear of death or fear of sex? Fear of death first. If we study our Freud, it's uh, Eros and Thanatos are binaries. We could even say that's an anthropological take on that. Why, why, why f a fear of death? Death is oblivion. Death puts them out of their suffering, right? Doesn't seem like a happy place except when they're pounding laundry on the, the you know, Vikram. Yeah, Yeah, she sees oblivion. She's, she wants to have yeah. sex with Hachi, too. 
She's she's in a sense so evil. She just sees sex as something as currency, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, do Alex? Do these <clears throat> do these young people? Are they really enjoying their sex? And then why, in in terms of the contrivance in the movie, would Hachi get killed? Um, uh, I don't really know if anybody's enjoying sex. I guess if they weren't, they wouldn't do it. Um, what was the second part of it? I'm just saying, did those two young people find a happiness in this horrific Civil War world? I think so, because if they didn't, why would they keep trying to see each other? I don't think that necessarily a physical relationship would have been enough of a reason for them to try to run to each other as much as they could and risk getting hurt themselves. Okay, you relationships... So when, you when, re this, yeah. when the uh, ghost comes like after her, or the, the ghost, the older woman, she still tries to get around her at the very end. Yeah. In the end, she's not even scared. I mean, she's half scared, but it's like, oh, man. And then there's a scene, she goes around and jumps on the grass and jumps on Hachi. It's like, oh, God, this wasn't going to last. Um, couldn't also the sex be almost a return to normalcy for them? Because they're living in this war-torn world. I mean, sex is normal. It's primal. It's back to basics. It's... I mean, most people, most Freudians say it's the main act. Everything you do in your conscious life, conscious manifestation is part of this unconscious world which says to survive, which is really libido. The way you overwork your tasks, the way you do want it to get that A, according to Freud, it's all about this libido drive. And a lot of people used to take a more uh, simplistic look. I like this notion of cognitive dissonance. Do you think they would be happy if they moved in together? No. She's still like sad over her husband dying. Didn't seem too sad, but I, mean, I think I think she was getting off on how secretive the yeah. whole thing is, and even him. I see Hachi as the last. If I were your father, I would say Hachi's the <laughs> last guy I would want you guys to hook up with because it's like I don't see how I see Hachi lasting a month and then bagging that gig, man. Uh, I think the movie is really nihilistic because it seems at first to be saying that the only real way to survive is to strip away all that. Fakeness, the armor is Ooh, I love it. Jeremy, you hit on something, a binary. The way the samurai were totally armored up and the way that the daughter-in-law yeah, took it all off and were, yeah. was naked. Yeah, and but then they end up dying anyway. Like, there's no... Or they end up being in danger of oblivion. It's basically like it ends with them jumping over the whole... The oblivion. two women jump... And we don't know as an audience, did the old one go in? Did the yeah, old one know. fall? It's like the last scene in, in Inception, right? Was the top yeah. stopping or is it... Okay, what, what's that, Jeremy, what's that last contrivance do for you? I think it kind of makes the case that there's no real way to know... Like, it's all chaos. The grass, it's all obscuring everything. It's almost like... The top no you spin things. is always going to be your top, in yeah. a sense. The dream that you have tonight is going to be real. But Probably yeah. only a way to figure out the day before or to figure out what problem you're having with your girlfriends or your parents or whatever, but it's no less real than this real life, right? Uh, at least at the time. I like this. I like the metaphor. The grassland is everywhere. We live in this grassland the way they did. It's like, will you do well in your MCATs? Will you get out here? Will, it, will you get an A on the chemistry test? Yes, sir. That's what I was thinking. Ah, I thought some people blurted that out, and I thought I think the first time I saw it it's too. So relate that to class, class struggle. This is interesting, but the way you said it's warriors killing peasants, and peasants when they get the advantage killing warriors, and meanwhile the warriors are fighting each other, presumably for the side that the peasants are on. And some of them were. It's kind of like it hasn't changed it's much. Exactly the same as Seven Samurai. Like yeah, or or Sword of Doom. Did you ever see Sword of Doom? Fantastic. Oh, yeah. This guy goes through forty different warriors. It's the most incredible sword fight I've ever seen. It was done in the sixties, Shannon. And then also with that, you know how the mother, the old one, was, you know, 
kind of chastising Hachi because, like, she's like, oh, you wouldn't you kill that people, and she's saying the samurai are no good because they're just going out and killing people. <coughs> she's doing the exact same thing just as a peasant. Is Do you think, let's update it, you think we keep unemployment artificially high in order to make our peasant class join the army? I mean, there's no reason this unemployment level has to be this high. None at all. Everyone knows that. Right. And it's like, I think it's to keep this disaffected peasant class keep joining the army. Because especially in the interior, when there's no jobs around and whatever, right. then they, they believe all the propaganda and whatever, and they go off and, and risk themselves. So they, in a sense, they become indentured samurai. They're, they're right. going off. To kill to people across the... Yeah, say, I'm just doing it for my family. I don't really have a political orientation. Um, we might be almost uh, done here. Let's continue to talk. Thank you to Emily, though. <laughs> See you on YouTube.